Welcome to this month's show of Hemfield Happenings. I'm Brian Ram. And I'm Xander Hughes. It's a new decade, and we have been producing Hemfield Happenings episodes for over 25 years. That's a really long time. And this month, we take a look at the new famous social media platform, TikTok. How our diving team is intertwined with Township's team. And how VR fitness is becoming big in Lancaster. Stay tuned for these stories and more. Now that we are a bit more comfortable in these chairs, let's get into the first story of the year. With the start of the new year, many people are looking to make New Year's resolutions. One of the most common ones is to go to the gym. Grace Monos shows the benefits of a few different gyms in Lancaster. Working out is so fun. There are many places in Lancaster to get exercise. Power Train and I Am Limitless Fitness are two places to get exercise in a unique environment. I Am Limitless Fitness has special classes like no other gym in Lancaster. Valerie Schulz is a huge part of I Am Limitless. Okay, so my position at I Am Limitless is I am one of the co-owners. So um, myself and my business partner take care of all of the, the daily responsibilities of owning and running a business. And we also teach about eight to nine classes per week. We are different from other gyms because we offer a wide variety of classes. We consider ourselves a boutique fitness studio, which means we don't have any uh, big equipment. We don't have treadmills, we don't have ellipticals. Um, we have three studio rooms that allow us to offer yoga, strength training, and cardio all under one roof. So you can come and get everything that you need in one place. One of their most well-known classes is the trip. Okay, so the TRIP is an internationally um, known program. However, there are only 69 locations worldwide. Um, it's a spin class with a very big wall uh, that is projected upon with different videos. So you feel like you're traveling through different worlds on a bike. Powertrain is another gym that has different strengths and focuses. Cody Schaub is a trainer at Powertrain. Uh, we only do individualized personal training here, um, so everybody that comes in does their own workout, tailored to them, written for them for their specific goals. Um, if they have injuries, we're taking that into account, we're taking into account their sport. There are many student athletes that see the benefits in coming to Powertrain. I go to Powertrain because in Powertrain they have specific workouts for you and what sports you're going to do and for your workout plan what you need to do. Um, they listen to what sports you play and they give you lists based on that so you can grow as you need. There are also other opportunities at Powertrain. Uh, we do boot camp style classes, so it's a 45 minute to an hour like high intensity interval training um, where we're doing anything from band resistant exercises, body weight exercises, dumbbell, um, just keeping high intensity, keeping your heart rate up the whole time. Even though I Am Limitless and Powertrain are two very different fitness environments, they both help anyone and everyone get in shape. From Hempfield Happenings, I'm Grace Monis. Hempfield teachers have been very successful in the past year. Riley Wilton displayed some accomplishments from these teachers. Speed it up, spread it out, speed it up, spread it out, speed it up. If you... It feels nice to be recognized, but what about those who go unsung, like public teachers? Well, actually, these amazing people receive all kinds of awards. It's just some people don't know about them. 
take Rebecca Richter for example. This Hemfield German teacher spent a year co-writing a lengthy article that was recently published. And she did this all simply to express her passion for the globalization of the German language. So I wrote an article in a scholarly journal called the Unterrichtspraxis, which is the, the practice of teaching. The topic was the globalized AP German classroom. So how teachers integrate globalized themes within the AP German curriculum. But for me, no, it was just, it's just because I wanted to contribute to the community, just to kind of show the German teaching community how high school teachers are integrating this topic. When she's not here, she's running marathons and doing triathlons and like, I don't know how she does it all. We work really well hand in hand and um, we love what we're doing and it's very obvious that she loves what she's doing. At the beginning of the semester, our t-shirts, there's... Another great example of success is Linda Miller, who recently received the Ethel G. Anke Award. This award is given to those who display the admirable qualities of the former president of the Pennsylvania State Association of Health, Physical Education, Recreation, and Dance. You're going to set up your topic at that area. When I read about her, there were some really neat connections between what I do present day and what she did then. When I go to their annual convention, I always get re-energized by really cool and positive people. And when I come back to teaching, then I'm teaching and learning becomes something that is almost like new and novel ideas, and I like that. She was very, very inviting, very helpful. She's, she's a great colleague and very passionate about just overall wellness. It just goes to create a positive culture within our department. And Amy Thompson is yet another teacher to recently receive an esteemed recognition. She received the O.F. Stanball Alumni Chemistry Award. Water. Zero and a hundred. It's not going past either zero or a hundred, so it's not undergoing a phase change, it's only undergoing a temperature change. Um, Dr. Stanball was one of the leading chemistry professors at Elizabethtown College, and after he passed away, they started this um, this award in his honor. So it's somebody from the college who graduated and is doing something in the field of chemistry. Um, you know, I, I hopefully get across to my students how much fun chemistry is and things like that. I know most of my students are not going to be chemistry majors, um, you know, but Elizabethtown College, their motto is to educate for service. So hopefully I'm teaching my students to become good citizens of the world and if they learn some chemistry along the way, that's an added benefit. And we have water. Mrs. Thompson is, is does that def, absolutely deserve the award. She uh, works incredibly hard, loves her students, so caring about making sure that they've got what they need and that they've got their you know, materials with them and everything. And then she'll help you during her flexes. She gives up her free time all the time for the kids to help. Plus she's got you know, boatloads of enthusiasm. She's very passionate about what she does. She loves chemistry. She loves what she teaches, but she loves working with the kids. One doesn't have to look far to find great successes in the school setting. From Hemfield Happenings, I'm Riley Wilton. 6.01 times 1,000, so that takes care of this whole first part. Congratulations to those teachers. Speaking of congratulations, Mr. Bender, the teacher for the Communication Technology Program at Hemfield, was one of the 12 finalists for PA's Teacher of the Year. This means he will be supporting Joe Welsh, the PA Teacher of the Year, through workshops and presentations. Congrats! Dr. Snyderman, the gifted teacher at Mountville Elementary and Lannisville Intermediate Center, won PA's Gifted Education Educator of the Year. Congrats to Dr. Snyderman as well. Morgan Minnick explored a local business, always never done, and how it is recycling old furniture. Always Never Done started with an idea and is now a local repurposed furniture parlor created by Amy Geib. Always Never Done started as a side project while Amy was working at the hospital. So I was actually an x-ray tech at the hospital um, and then I moved to a uh, orthopedic practice. So I did x-ray for about 10 years and in the meantime I sort of got that itch to do something creative again because before x-ray school I'd gone to art school so 
I started a blog called Always Never Done where I documented uh, projects that I did around the house um, for myself and then friends sort of caught on and said, hey, can you do this for me? And some bigger companies picked up and then it, it just sort of spiraled from there. As Always Never Done grew, so did Amy's desire to quit her job and open a store, even with the risks involved. If you're quitting your job, it's a scary thing, but I think in the back of my head, I just felt like I have to do this. Uh, if I don't try it, I'm never going to be satisfied with my current job. So decided this is what I love to do. Yeah. I'm going to quit my day job and, and open a shop. Amy opened her shop in the Old Mill Court, but as Always Never Done expanded, they moved to their new location off Harrisburg Pike. This expansion was followed by a lot of extra work. I've been very busy lately, especially with expanding into the new shop. Now that we own the property versus, you know, leasing a space, that's a totally different ballgame. But, I mean, my days are just filled to the gills with always never done. There's not a day that goes by that, you know, I'm, if, even if I'm off, if I have a day off, I'm still doing something. But I love it. I love it. This work includes obtaining and repurposing furniture. We do repurpose furniture, which basically we either find things off the road, <laughs> people donate items, estate sales, auctions, just things that people don't want anymore. We will gladly take them because we can flip them and turn them into like awesome pieces. So it actually doesn't take as long as people would assume. Um, we use a chalk paint so we don't have to sand all the way down. Um, so we just do a light sanding, we clean it, and then we paint it. Now obviously there's different techniques, so some you'll see are a solid painting, some have more of a distressed look, which takes more time, and then some we do like a faux painting or an overlay, which then takes another step, but you can usually get a piece done in a couple hours, so it's not that bad. Repurposing furniture is not the only work that Amy puts into Always Never Done. The store also helps redesign other people's homes. And we also do a lot of custom work, so customers come to us for furniture that they have in their house, which we refinish either on site or at their house. We do interior design, um, which can range from completely redoing someone's space from start to finish, or just maybe moving things around a little bit, adding our touch on it. Anything that the customer needs, we do, and then sometimes it turns into a lot more than that. Always Never Done started as a simple home improvement blog and turned into a successful furniture parlor because of the time and devotion that Amy Guy put into it. From Hemfield Happenings, I'm Morgan Minnick. Christmas to you. Thank you. Uh -huh. Bye-bye. See ya. Hemfield High School's Courtney Myers is an ice skater. Sabrina Lessons follows her as she skates her way to the top. Ice skating may be considered a weekend activity or just a hobby for most high school students, but one student, Courtney Myers, has devoted her life to this sport. Like Courtney Myers is a senior at Hemfield High School, but before she even stepped foot into elementary school, Courtney was on the ice skating rink. I started skating when I was three years old because my parents both played ice hockey and they wanted me to be their little hockey player. Despite the push from her parents, Courtney would not stick with hockey. Though leaving ice hockey did not mean leaving the rink as she began figure skating. Be At just three years old, Courtney was skating, six years younger than Olympic figure skater Peggy Fleming, who did not even set foot on ice until age nine. After a few years of skating, Courtney signed up for her first competition, and it was here that she came to an important realization. I'd have to say, like, during my first show, my first competition, I finally realized, like, yeah, this is fun and I could keep doing this. In only second grade, Courtney had to find a way to balance her passion with school, as after-school practices were not enough. I took online classes to be able to come in late, so I only had to come in for second and the rest of the day. Although balancing school and skating may have been the first major challenge Courtney faced, it was definitely not her last. Her coach, Ursula Wolfer, has been able to guide her past these difficulties. Edge work and things, I think, are more what she's had to work on. Expression, artistry, she's slightly shy, so I think we've done a lot of pulling her out of her shell. She's also a perfectionist, so she's really hard on herself if something doesn't go exactly the way she feels it should be. Do you want to do just the flip-in pattern one more time to hit yeah. that? Okay. 
While her coach works through the physical challenges, her parents have been there to support Courtney's commitment emotionally. My parents have been very involved. They have been to like every show, every competition. They have made so much of my props and costumes. This support and hard work has undoubtedly paid off. Courtney has gone above and beyond in the ice skating community, competing at the national level as just a junior in high school. Only six people come from each section and there's only three sections. So it was like hard to get in the top six. I'm not freaking out, I'm really okay. Even with the tough competition, Courtney managed to come in 13th place overall. And then remember after the leap, I gave you a, like a push crossover before the right inside rocker. Awards and experiences are not the only things Courtney has received through ice skating. I think it's helped me in so many ways. Like, it showed me that like not everything can be perfect and that I have to like understand and deal with that. Courtney has had a successful high school career, but it will not end here. I don't see her stopping anytime soon. To be honest, I would like her to skate as long as she is physically able. My goal is to be on Disney on ice, and I would like to keep, if I go to college, I'd like to also keep skating in college and compete. Courtney Myers is a shining example of what it means to be an athlete and an artist who loves what she does. For Hemfield Happenings, I'm Sabrina Lessons. Every student has a chance to participate in the spelling bee. Gunnar Main investigated the process of reaching the top. Almost every Hemfield student has been through at least one spelling bee in their school career. Some students, however, take this opportunity to the next level. The students here are currently participating in their school spelling bee, but this is only the first step to reach the national level. I'm Bethany Eaton. I'm the instructional support teacher at Landisville Intermediate Center, and I also coordinate the spelling bee for Landisville Intermediate Center as well as the Hempfield School District spelling bee. It's a great opportunity for students to expand their vocabularies. It also helps with sort of life skills, um, sort of um, being calm under pressure, and it's also uh, for perseverance, just um, studying words because we give them word lists that have like hundreds of words on them and just taking it from there and learning about word origins and learning about different languages and words where words came from can really be beneficial for people later in life. It gives students an opportunity to, ch to shine. Um, we've seen students who are, are very um, shy and um, go on to win bees. The steps to reach the national level are as follows. First, the school bee. Next, the district bee. After that, a written test, and if the speller passes that, then he or she moves on to regionals. Finally, after regionals, the speller is invited to nationals in Washington, D.C. As a matter of fact, Hemfield has a few spellers who made it to the top tiers of the bee. Uh, I would say just uh, know, know the lists. They give you some lists, so I would definitely advise uh, to memorize those and know them by heart. Uh, and also to study uh, some spelling patterns from different uh, languages of origin. For me, the most important part of the spelling bee is it really pushed me to do something that I wasn't sure I was capable of. If you're not necessarily academically minded, you don't have to have a huge academic handle to learn how to spell correctly. And for me, what it was is a lot of like studying and just I would write down different um, words for hours. Like I would just sit and write lists of words for hours and hours until I knew how to spell them. With enough practice and determination, reaching nationals is an accomplishment any speller can achieve. And for Hemfield Happenings, I'm Gunnar May. Meredith Hunter explores the effect that the Hemfield German program has on its students. The Hemfield German program is a well-developed language curriculum that has been teaching and inspiring students for years. Many students have gone on to apply their German knowledge after high school. I spoke to Megan Leinbach and Frau Richter about how they've been using their German knowledge past graduation. Recently, a Hemfield student returned to the school to speak with the German club. After graduating Hemfield, she moved to Berlin and is currently working in Austria. Well, my name is Megan Leinbach and I graduated from Hemfield in 2007 um, and I took German here with Frau Janata and after I graduated I studied at the University of Pittsburgh. After that I got a scholarship to go to Berlin uh, and live and study and work there for a year. And that's where I met Christian, my boyfriend. There was always the drive to stay in Germany and to find more opportunities in Europe. 
I love the German language and I've always wanted to kind of perfect it, so I've always found ways to go back to help my language skills. After I graduated with my bachelor's degree, I applied for a bunch of programs, you know, and that's the program I got accepted to. It's called Congress Bundestag Youth Exchange for Young Professionals. It's like an immersion program and cultural exchange. Another graduate that I spoke to was Hemfield's own Frau Richter. So I graduated from Hemfield in 2006, which feels like forever ago now. One German teacher, Frau Schaudel, she was going to retire around the time that I was projected to graduate. So I kind of had it in the back of my mind that I, I would like to come back, but there's no guarantee of where you're gonna end up, but I, I did want to come back to Hemfield. I really enjoyed my experience here as a, as a student and wanted to be part of this awesome program. So I originally wanted to be an art educator and I took German, I loved German, I just didn't know how I was gonna use it. So when I went to Germany on the Gap Exchange, I completely fell in love with German beyond what I was already had fallen in love with in the classroom. Seeing like the culture in action, I determined that that was my true passion and that's what I wanted to share with the world and that German could be something that I can hopefully encourage other people to, to learn. These are just two examples of students whose lives and careers have been affected by the Hempfield German program. Many Hempfield students have been given opportunities to apply their German skills past graduation. For Hempfield Happenings, I'm Meredith Hunter. Diabetes is a disease that many people unfortunately have. Ava Bear talked with some diabetics to see how they cope with it in the gym. And every day, I get a little bit stronger. Yeah. Type 1 diabetes is a disease in which a person's pancreas does not produce any insulin for their body, so it must be injected with an insulin pump on a regular basis. Marla Bennett is one of the many people not only living with the disease, but spreading awareness about it. So one of the main reasons I raise awareness is because there's um, a lot of um, misunderstanding around the disease and um, so few people really know what it is like to live with type 1. Bella, Marla's daughter, best tries to explain how type 1 diabetes impacts a life. Um, I think that with living with diabetes is a lot different than living without diabetes because you really have to be watching your activity levels and what you're eating because it's really life or death. Um, for example, my mom, if she doesn't eat a meal, she'll, go, she'll have a low blood sugar, which is basically when her glucose levels are too low and she kind of goes unconscious. Most people are left wondering how patients living with diabetes keep themselves from actually getting low blood sugar and keeping healthy. So every three months I have blood work drawn um, and my doctor checks my um, levels. While um, during those three months what I do is I try to watch my carbohydrates, I give myself insulin via the insulin pump and I um, work out. To patients with diabetes, exercise lowers their blood glucose levels and increases the body's sensitivity to insulin. This is why Marla and many others choose to go work out. So overall, I'm not different from other people, but what one thing that makes me um, unique is that I have type 1 diabetes, which means that my pancreas does not make any insulin. Like Marla said, patients dealing with diabetes are not at all unlike others, and understanding what the disease is and figuring out ways to help is appreciated greatly by many. And from Hempfield Happenings, I'm Ava Bear. Hempfield Swimming and Diving has been producing successful athletes for the past 20 years. Larissa Schaefer dove into what it's all about. Hempfield is well known for its academics, but one sport that doesn't get recognized is diving. Chris Moss has been coaching Hemfield and Mannheim Township diving for three years. Due to the limited amount of diving boards in the area, Hemfield High School's diving team does not dive in Hemfield. With the situation we have in Lancaster Lebanon League right now, the only people that really have a diving board to compete in is Mannheim Township. So unfortunately, the diving program would have suffered if it wasn't for Mannheim Township and Hempfield to jointly come together. Diving's not really a well-known sport, and it continues to die off as more and more schools get rid of diving boards. So I'd like to keep diving, you know, moving forward and bring it, bring it back, per se. There are four Hempfield divers on the diving team, one of them being Cassie Felsinger. 
Cassie is not currently diving due to a surgery over the summer, but she still finds a way to be involved with the team. I still come and I um, help support the team and I help the new divers with their um, approaches and learning new skills. I'm a cheerleader, so the skills I have obtained through tumbling classes have definitely benefited me with the technique I needed for diving. Basically just the basic technical skills of going off the board is all we need to teach, but for somebody without a gymnastics background, you have to be naturally athletic and have no fear. I can teach people all the skills they need to dive, but I can't teach somebody to be fearless. So, you know, if you have to have a little bit of guts to do diving, you have to be able to risk it and be able to try it. If you've never done diving before and you're scared, we have people at every skill level. We do not have tryouts per se. So I accept everybody that is willing and wants to be on the team with a good attitude. So everybody's welcome, everybody come out. It's a great sport, it's awesome to get involved with. Hemfield diving is a unique winter sport where you can get physically active, learn new skills, and meet new people. From Hemfield Happenings, I'm Larissa Shafe. TikTok is a social media platform on the rise with over 1 billion downloads. Autumn Rhodes explores why teenagers are so infatuated with this app. According to CNN, teens spend roughly 7 hours a day on their phones. And recently, much of that time has been spent on the popular app TikTok. TikTok is a social media platform for creating, sharing, and discovering short videos. It was originally labeled as Musical.ly and rebranded in 2018 after being purchased by a Chinese company. It is used by young people as an outlet to express themselves through singing, dancing, comedies, skits, and lip syncing. The app has recently became very popular, with over 1.5 billion users and more than 1 billion videos are viewed every day. Wait. Renegade, renegade. Oh. The app has created many teen celebrities, and Hemfield has a few students with a large following. DJ Gordon is a local icon, with over 50,000 followers, and some of his videos have been viewed hundreds of thousands of times. TikTok's like an app of our generation where people make dance videos, or just 15 second short videos or minute videos, and they go viral, sometimes on a For You page. And the For You page is cool because it's tailored towards what you like. So you get a bunch of content that you think is funny or that you might enjoy. The first time I got on the For You page and it started going viral, a lot of people texted me and I was like, oh, really? So I was surprised and then, yeah, it's been a ride ever since. There are some negative comments that you can see, like even if you're not very popular, people don't mind commenting because they feel comfortable behind a screen being mean towards you. So you have to watch out for bullies. Cyberbullying isn't TikTok's only negative. Many teens find themselves addicted to the app, and Hemfield students definitely spend a lot of time on it. Like an hour or two a day? I just don't use it at all. Three hours a day. <laughs> not at all, really. Like six to eight hours. Like one? Like 30 minutes? <laughs> Probably like four hours. Every day for like at least an hour. TikTok is now a part of internet culture, and it's left its mark on the world. For Hemfield Happenings, I'm Autumn Rhodes. Well, this is the end of this month's episode, but not the end of Hempfield Happenings. Be sure to tune into the next show where you will see some fresh new faces. And as always, thanks for watching and have a happy new year.